Hello, everybody. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Recap, a guy's review. Very early for you this Tuesday morning. We've got week five of Zach Shell Cross, the season of The Bachelor. Let's talk about it. I'm disgruntled. I'll be honest with you. I'll lead with that. I am disgruntled with Zach's actions. I know he had COVID, but oh boy, was he annoying me this episode. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment. And also, don't forget, follow me on Instagram. I have stand-up shows tomorrow in Santa Barbara and Thursday in San Diego. I'm going to be back in San Diego before I head off to Indonesia for my honeymoon. Patreon.com slash Dave Neal if you want to see the behind-the-scenes green room video of my chat with Katie Thurston, of course, before our performance uh, this past Wednesday night at the Sold Out Show. And every afternoon, Bachelor Rush Hour, the podcast, we'll have um, we'll have extra content that you're not going to get in this video on Bachelor Rush Hour. Okay, we open in London. Let's go over to London. How nice. There they are. Standard double-decker bus B-roll tour, Bahamas to London, two places with bad food. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Conch fritters and fish and chips. I love, I love some good, you know, fried seafood, but boy, not exactly culinary delight here in London. I know someone's I'm going to get some British commenters. Actually the royal, you know, whatever. I don't care. All right, the royal lasagna that we it's all just a crock pot and hope. I grew up with that in my childhood. You know, what's for dinner? A casserole? Yuck. <laughs> all right, single moms, what can you do? She tried her best. The women cheer to London with some beers. Uh, let's see if Zach gets, you know, I don't know, a boner in the eye of London. or What are they going to do? You know what I mean? They just, there's are they going to uh, behead each other at the, uh, at the uh, tower of London, you know, you ever been? Okay, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of tragedy. And why are we supporting the monarchy anyway? Aren't they the you know the one of the you know the uh, the old uh, the stain of society as far as all the colonialism and everything? I know we're a part of it. We're like the angry child who left after college and never came back, as opposed to those Canucks up there who still have the royal penny or whatever you guys have. Okay, I'm probably pissing everybody off right now. It's all fun. We're having fun. The hotel has views of Big Ben which is nice. I think uh, um, it would be a, every, you know, it, it, how annoying would it be? This would be hell. If every time you went on vacation, the bachelor women are staying in the hotel room next door and you're like, oh, it's so nice to finally be in this beautiful city of Kura, you know, you're so wherever. And then in the next door, you just hear the balcony, Zach, and the women just start yelling and everything. Okay. Seriously, I, I would demand, you know, some extra, I don't know, uh, room service or maybe a spa credit or something. Okay. The date card arrives. Gabby gets it. Zach calls Gabby his queen, and man, am I over this monarchy. Zach, is because it's like, look, is 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 uh, London's whole identity that they have a queen in a dictatorship? I know we have a quote-unquote democracy. It's really more of like a, I don't know, the corporations run everything here, but uh, <laughs> I digress. Zach takes Gabby out on the town. They look at some fragrances so they can curate their own scent together, and the scent I'm smelling is that it stinks. Um, no, their date's going okay. Maybe I'm being a little crabby. We get to see Gabby's quirky personality. I expect nothing less from a Vermonster. That's not Gabby. That's a Corgi. Um, Corgi. Oh, Corgis arrive from the Royal Bloodline. Uh, who's, who's testing their genetics? Where the Royal Bloodline Corgis arrive. Um, Gabby and Zach lay on the ground surrounded by dogs. Hey, it's a good date. You know what I mean? It's a good date. Well-groomed dogs. Um, luckily, they weren't basset hounds. If those were my basset hounds, they'd just be drooling all over you. Um, or, or or worse, farting on you. I have a senior basset hound. All he does is fart now. Um, <laughs> that's a, All he does is fart. That's okay. We love him anyway. Uh he tests our love sometimes. We have to put the uh, covers over our head at night because he fumigates. All right, Gabby comes back to the hotel with all of her bags. Everybody's jealous. They obviously went on some hotel, sh or some shopping spree. Game of Roses refers to this as the pretty woman date. And then she shows off her Jimmy shoes, and all the women go nuts for the Jimmy Choo, Jimmy Shoe. The women are so excited. Kylie says she doesn't even know the last time a man bought her a meal. Dang, Kylie, can somebody buy her, you know, some conch fritters or something? Let alone Jimmy Shoes. Jimmy Shoes, Jimmy Shoes. God bless you. Jimmy Choo. Don't forget production bought her these, not Zach, although he does have a well-paying job. So Zach has a nice job. So maybe he'd buy her one of these things. But I think you'd be ridiculous to think anyone on a date is going to buy you that much stuff. And if they do, what are they hiding? Can't you just win them over with a smile? Meanwhile, Greer is pissed because she told Zach how much she loves tea. And now Zach gets tea with Gabby. The audacity of Zach to get tea with Gabby when Greer also 
also loves tea. Um, I love uh, coffee. If I see uh, someone else at a Dunkin' Donuts, I'm not going, the nerve, they had a caffeinated beverage without me. Although I would like if they stop by and get me a coffee. Let me tell you this. If you ever see me in public and you bring me a coffee, I won't complain. Just no sugar, whatever type of creamer you want. I prefer coconut. I'll take anything else. Greer storms off now that it's announced that she's on the group date and not a one-on-one. Greer says her love language is affirmations, and she hasn't received that. Uh, My love language is also affirmations, so leave a nice comment. All right. Gabby shuffles by with all of her gifts as Greer cries in the hallway. That's not Greer. That's a different shot there. It's like, sorry, you're crying in front of my room, but I need to prep for the second half of my amazing date. And then she steps over Greer's lifeless, sad, uh, you know, existence. We like Greer, but, you know, this is the time of the season that you just have, it's hardships, you know, you're traveling, you're lonely, you miss your family and all that. Gabby looks stunning, Zach dressed in the tux, the evening portion of the date shaping up romantically. Of course, as we all know from the teasers, he's about to get COVID. So we're looking at everything like, is there COVID on the champagne glasses? where's the COVID? Zach mentions he was devastated last year when he thought he knew someone and he didn't. Another subtle dig at Rachel. We're getting a lot of these, by the way. In my opinion of Zach, I'm not saying it's soured, but as we see how people deal with adversity, we get to see people's true colors. Um, Not to say everyone's defined by how they deal with adversity, but you don't want to be with someone who, when the going gets rough, they resort to sort of like kind of weird, uh, you know, I don't know, ways ways of fighting, uh, foreshadowing his combo with Greer coming up. Gabby says, Zach makes her feel beautiful. And then UB40 sings. Am I pronouncing that? Is it UB40 or UB40? Can't help falling in love. I can't help finding a note that's in tune. And then someone left a comment on my Twitter saying, that's how they sing the song. Well, that's how I sing karaoke. No notes are in tune. It doesn't make it right. All right. Mercedes finds out she's on the group date. And um, leaves the room hyperventilating. Greer's also angry. Jess is sad. It's interesting to see how the different people channel their emotions. Some, some to anger, some to sadness. Part of what makes Bachelor interesting is seeing people who normally wouldn't waste their time probably would be the center of attention and now they're getting put on hold. That's kind of what it is. It's sort of like the ego. Every single one of these women are young 20s, mid-20s. They can walk into any bar and get attention. They're some of the most beautiful women that they could cast. And now they're being told, actually, he's on a date with someone else. And they go, what? No, I am the date, you know. And it's like, hey, I get it. I get it. It's tough. It's um, it's a it's a pain. It's a it's a bad process, and it, it creates a lot of drama. Um, if 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 you didn't if a guy wasn't giving you attention in real life, you go to another bar, or you tell you find his friend, or you go somewhere else. You know, you have options. They don't have options. Zach tells the ladies he can't attend their group date. He's under the weather, and um, so the ladies take a take a sad tour on a double decker. Oh my gosh, how sad was that tour? There they are yawning. So the ladies, uh, they're the, I feel bad for the tour guide, you know? He was excited to lead the tour, and now it's a rough room. A bagpipe shows up. Golly, Kylie's mad. She dressed cute and sexy, and now the weather is rainy. Nothing says sexy like a cheap poncho. You know that. You know, you ever on a, you know, those group tours, you got to get out your tarp and just, like, suffocate yourself because uh, you're hanging out with your family, and you're like, oh, this is the uncle we don't like to talk to, and I can't un- avoid him like we're on Facebook. All right, Zach, say, we've all got that uncle. It's like, what is that uncle? uncle doing why can't that uncle realize i don't want to talk to him uh or insert whatever family member jack zach says he feels jet lagged and run down doesn't want to get anyone else sick pray for the camera guy who's exposed to him of course no one cares about the crew i do uh pro union pro crew the women drink beers at a pub. They should let a few, they should let some local blokes hit on them, right? They're at a pub. Zach's sick. Just let a couple guys talk to him. Keep you know keep it interesting. Zach, you're under the weather. Get some competition in there. They do a beer chugging contest, and Greer spills a decent amount of the beer. Now look, Greer's pretty good. She deep throated that beer. She took it right to the back of the throat, but she still spilled a lot. I'd have to disqualify her if that was an actual competition. Um, I don't have the photo there, but uh, there they are. They're all having fun. All the women cram into a phone booth. That's exactly. This is the exact opposite of social distancing. And then the ladies dance in front of a beef eater. This is a beef eater. I'm assuming they rented this guy out because after dancing with him, he did one of those like, you know, nice little like, uh, you know, eyebrow nods as they walked away. I don't know if that's in the beef eater training guide. Uh, Zach leaves a note for the ladies that he won't be well in time for the evening. And Greer says it feels like she's getting stood up. And that's kind of fun. Uh, You know, it's like obviously she's not, but she doesn't know what's going on. Greer says she doesn't have grace for him anymore. She gave grace. I gave grace during the day. 
But the second they take away the rose ceremony, no more grace. And of course, that's like, you, you, I'm not, I'm not going to say that's a red flag, but in, in real life, it's like if someone had a uh, intestinal issue, it would take more than a couple hours to clear out. It's like, let the guy, you know, rest in, you know, uh, I was going to say rest in peace, but that's the wrong to let the guy relax in peace. Jesse Palmer arrives, tells the girls there's bad news. There's bad news. So Jesse Palmer tells him that. And then that Zach tested positive for COVID. The women cry. But are they sad for Zach or are they sad for themselves? You know, they're like, I'm so sad. Everyone's like, is Zach okay? They're like, who cares about Zach? I got a new outfit. I'm trying to wear my Jimmy shoes. The women cry and, and all that. Katie shows up to his hotel room to speak to him through the wall, which is kind of cute. It was a cute little scene. Where's Katie? There she is. Speaking through the wall, she brought him a gift basket, says she hasn't stopped thinking about him. Katie says she can see herself being married to him at the end of this. So we're starting to see that next level. And what's in the gift basket, by the way? It's funny how she's sort of dressed up still. And it's like, he can't see you. I guess he could have looked at her through the viewfinder. Nothing, you know, you thought cyber sex was lonely. Imagine, um, you know, hotel door sex. There's just like looking through a fisheye lens. It's like, I never knew I could get turned on by a fisheye lens before, but here we are. All right. <laughs> That's why you should never touch the walls in a hotel room. Trust me. Just try to... <laughs> okay, you get the point. Jesse, uh, definitely don't touch the curtains. I'll tell you that. Okie dokie. Jesse tells the group that Zach is going to a do a virtual cocktail party and virtual row ceremony. And it's like, what if he has long haul? Maybe they're going to do a virtual fantasy suite. You know what I mean? Zoom could sponsor it. Zoom and Blue, Ch uh, Blue Pill. Blue Pill. Blue Blue Chew, the pill, boner pill. Okay. Greer mentions that when on Zoom, she will look at herself in the corner, which is probably the most relatable thing I've ever heard. So, you know how, like, <laughs> she said it, and, and Zach's like, you'll look at yourself in the corner, and it's like, listen, Zach, you don't know you don't know enough ladies. Yes, the ladies are looking at themselves in the corner. It's not necessarily for vanity purposes. They just want to make sure they're showing off their right angles for you. So, you could, th you know, it's like, I, I understand he's such a engineer mindset, which is probably an insult to engineers, but he's got this mindset that doesn't play. We saw that with Gabby when she cracked a joke at him. He barely cracked a smile. This would drive me literally insane. I don't know. I don't know um, if it's just the pressure getting to him and trying to... Anyone who's trying to be too serious, that's the oxymoron that exists on The Bachelor. You want to be seriously in love, but you can't get there by being serious. You have to let your playful side down. Life's a long journey. You just can't be serious. You have to You have to know when, you know, the partner you're choosing is going to be the main person... I should really have the uh, national anthem for this. The partner you're going to be choosing is going to be the main person that you're going to talk shit with for the rest of your life. Oh, you're dealing with a realtor you don't like. Talk shit to your partner. Oh, the waitress service was bad. Talk shit to your partner. You know what I mean? And so anyway, I don't know if he's got that muscle in him. And maybe, um, you know, what do I know, you know? I know I found a partner I can talk shit to. And if we go through a weird experience together, we can be like, what about that person? You know, uh, that's what it's all about. These Zoom dates, uh, they're good. No one needs to shower. That's what's good about a Zoom date. No no body odor issues. Greer, okay, here we go. This is our lot. This is the part that killed me. I might have to have me, have a second video about this. So make sure to subscribe to check that. Yeah, I'm going to make, you know what? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a second video about this right after going farther in depth. So that's going to be for subscribers only. So make sure you're subscribed. Greer compares Zach having COVID to when she got it at work. Zach clarifies that this is more important to him than a sales goal. Weird convo. Zach struggles with some simple conversational cues. Greer's just making small talk. She's relating to the high stakes of COVID and the situation she had where she also had it. Hey, bud, she's just relating to you. That's a thing people do when they're just making small talk. How's the weather? Well, the weather's not really important. Shut up, Zach. Shut up. Um, it had it had Jake Pavelka vibes to me, uh, which is not a compliment. So, um we don't know if it was edited in a certain way for brevity or what, but clearly she came out of that conversation being like, that was weird. If you met a guy at the bar and they weren't able to like um, go from A to B to C in a conversation like that, you'd be like, whoa, this guy, this guy does not read a room. Um, he So Zach breaks down on Zoom, says he was robbed of his time this week and sheds a tear chatting with Jesse. So maybe Zach's taking it really hard, but either way, you know, are you going to be in a relationship and you're going to have a bad day at work? So you're going to take it out on your wife or something. You got to like, uh, you know, I, I would say man up, human up and be better than that. I love that. Zach still got dressed up. Why can't he just wear a hoodie? You know what I mean? He's dressed up for the rose ceremony. Let's see if we can find it. Oh, there they are kissing people. So that was the part with Greer where he was like, I take this more seriously. Hey, Zach, you 
are on a dating show where there's a 1% success rate, okay? Don't be telling me you take, if you took things so seriously, you literally would have a better shot at love not being on the show. You actually don't take it seriously. If you took it seriously, anyway, you guys get the point, right? So we don't buy it. Um, uh, here's uh, Jesse watching one of my recaps. Okay, thank you so much for the support. No rose for Kylie or Mercedes. What a sad day to leave. Kylie calls herself stupid and is tired of waiting for the right person. Zach addresses all the women who remain. And he's like, let's see where this all leads us. And I hope everyone's like, hopefully to in, in the flesh conversations. Um, and then they do the virtual air hug, which I think is, what a trigger. That was the worst part of the pain. The, oh, 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 oh. Shut up and bow to each other. That's the only respectful way to do it. All right, folks. Well, that's it. More content content coming your way right after this. Don't forget, if you want to put a little bread in the tip jar, it helps the channel out immensely. Go to patreon.com slash Dave Neal for behind the scenes bonus content and also Bachelor Rush Hour, the free afternoon podcast every single day. We'll see you over there. Bye, everybody.